Alcohol burn, no depth, no character. So poor in fact that it is tempting to see if my car will run off there. Oof, harsh. Hello there everyone and welcome to John Drinks channel which I, John, have a drink and today I'm going to be looking at this. This is the Glenlivet Founder of Reserve um, and also as a little bonus uh, we'll be taking a look at what some people on the internet have to say about this whiskey because I think it's safe to say it's a bit of a divisive one. So if you want to see some of the more interesting reviews out there on the internet for this whiskey then stick around for the end of the video because we'll be covering those as well. There are some... There's some humdingers, let me tell you. But for now, we're going to have a quick look at this. Um, I've had this for a little while. It is Glenlivet's sort of... It was Glenlivet's replacement for the 12-year-old for a bit. And then on the back of some of the comments that this has gotten, they brought the 12-year-old back. There's a reason why a lot of whiskey distillers, particularly the more popular ones like Glenlivet, Glenmorangie, Ardbeg, those kind of places, do... Um, either younger whiskies or no age statement whiskies now because they, they kind of have to take the pressure off of their entry level malts like their 10 year olds, their 12 year olds and this is one way to do it. Some would argue it's not the right way to do it but a lot of those people aren't also distillers. I'm not a distiller, I, I don't know what kind of pressures these companies are under. It, it might be absolutely mahoosive. Um, it does fill a gap in the market, and that's what a lot of these products are there for. They're there to fill a gap in the market. They're for sort of like casual whiskey drinkers that eh, don't really want to have to think too much about it or spend too much money, certainly. Um, this is one that you'll always see heavily discounted. The retail price of this is somewhere along the lines of £36, but you will never pay that. Um, it's always on discount. If you've paid £36 for this, you, you're a sucker. Um, Supermarkets do this thing where they will have the price that it goes for and then the jacked up price. They'll charge the jacked up price for like a couple of weeks and then go back onto the sale price. And it encourages people to buy more because they think they're getting a deal, whereas really they're just... It's like it's the Black Friday effect, you know? Um, it says, oh, there's this much off of it. It was never that much to begin with, so, you know, you're not actually saving anything. But there's like an itch in your head that's like, I'm saving money. We, we're all part of the capitalist machine. We, we kind of know how it works and we know we still get suckered into it. Anyway, this isn't a rant about that. We're, we're looking at a no-age statement whiskey, aren't we? So, Glenlivet. I've had some previous with Glenlivet. It's not one that I've really covered much of because I've tried it a few times sort of, you know, just out and about and I've, I've never been impressed. I haven't. Um, Glenlivet has a long-standing history. Um, they were one of the first whiskey distillers actually to legally distill. Um, there's a whole story behind that and I don't really have my shit together to tell that story so I won't do that today. But long story short is... Um, <laughs> do you know, actually there's a funny thing with Space Siders. Um, they had to kind of trademark Glenlivet, they weren't able to. Um, l they were really successful as a Space Side whiskey back in the day, long before the modern day, um, and loads of other Speyside whiskies also start calling themselves uh, Glenlivet. So that's why they're called the Glenlivet, because they could trademark that. Um, but they weren't able to trademark Glenlivet. So technically speaking, any Speyside whiskey can say that they are Glenrothers Glenlivet or Glenfiddich Glenlivet if they really wanted to. Um, there are still some out there. I think Tom and Tal still do it. I might need to double check on that one. I think I think they might have dropped it since, but I think they the one of the last adopters just kind of like cling on in there. <laughs> Klingons. Um Yeah, I don't really know why I went off that tangent. I think I'm just trying to like put off trying this. It says established in 1824 on the front, um, which obviously is not how old this whiskey is, so not even fucking close. I don't know if they're trying to sucker people in with that because it is abnormally large. Um, and they're trying to play off of kind of like the whole heritage thing. This is a bottle of marketing. Um, without even cracking this open and trying this, I can tell you here and now that this is a bottle of marketing. Um, there's lots of teeny tiny writing on here and it's the story of how Glenlivet came to be. It's 40% Chill filtered, coloured, all that fun stuff. Uh, no age statement, so I would be amazed if it's anything more than three years, to be honest. Um, because it, what it is designed to do is just kind of fill your boots. 
that's that's why it's there. Um, I'm using a green whiskey glass today because the colour don't matter because it's all caramel colouring in here anyway. So you know we're not going to get anything off of that. So we might as well have a bit of a bit of visual fun with a nice jazzy green glass. Have I used the green one yet? I know I've used the blue and the red. Have you seen the green? I've got a green glass as well. It's kind of exciting content that people come along for. Okay. Um, Right, so, Glenlivet Founders Reserve. Okay. Man, 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 that's just pears. Pears, pears, and more pears. I'm not really getting much of an ethanol nose, which is surprising. I was expecting this to be rough, to be honest. I've, I've got preconceptions. I will, I will point that out now. I have preconceptions about this. But on the nose, I'm just kind of getting pears. And that's about it, really. Just, just kind of pears. Just pears and more pears. Yeah, I mean, it's a very strong pear scent. And I don't think I can tease anything else out of that. So if you don't like pears, you're already at a disadvantage. You're probably not best drinking Speyside, to be fair, if you don't like pears. Because it's a pretty common note so maybe maybe try a highland but anyway i'm gonna have a sip does it oh, hang on actually now it's had a bit of contact with the air it's gone a bit shortbready pears and shortbread does that work would that work make an interesting crumble i guess do you get pear crumble i suppose you can just kind of turn into mush wouldn't it i'm putting this off again aren't i okay i'm, I'm gonna put some in my mouth Mm. Oh. 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 Oh, I was ready to say nice things about it, and then the finish really ruined it. Oh, God, it's still going. Oh, okay, so... Huh, I kind of don't want to take another sip because that was quite unpleasant towards the finish. Um, okay, so it's a little bit caramelly. There's loads of like bright green fruits. You've got like green gauges, pears. It's a little bit sweet, but not offensively so. It's just kind of like mellows out with the fruit. It's, it's quite a nice kind of a initial flavor. Then that kind of falls away and you're left with acetone and hairspray and just kind of general horror. There's something really spiky as a sensation as well. It, it feels kind of like the whiskey is stabbing you in the back of the throat. Uh, and I don't mean that in like an amateur burn kind of a way. I mean, I, f I feel like I'm being attacked by the whiskey. Um, it's almost like, like robbers wearing a mask and then once they're getting on with it, they've like taken the mask off. That's not how robberies work, is it? Um, that was a really bad analogy. That... Starts off really good and then gets really fucking rough, I think is my, my takeaway for that. But let's let's give it another go. Let's 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 dive in. Yep, there it is. Oh god. <sighs> Interesting. Interesting. Ugh. Yeah, the the finish kind of like the finish lingers a bit too much and all of the the finish is just bad. It's just not nice. The initial presence, quite nice. It's like a caramel apple pear kind of a thing going on. It's pretty pleasant, if I'm being honest. And then it just gets replaced by this wave of kind of nightmares. Um, and it just becomes really like sour and acetony and chemically. And no, no, the finish ruins it. It really does, because it's, it's the last impression. You know, you'd almost be better off having that at the start. And then it finishes off kind of like mellow and pear and caramelly because you're kind of like okay i can forgive that because it gets better um this does not get better it gets worse which is not the the way around that you want that i'm gonna stick some water in it see if that takes the edge off um this is very a bit more very heavily touted as a mixing whiskey which is never a good sign for a malt whiskey um I'm not saying don't mix your whiskies. Um, there's loads of mixologists out there that do some really interesting things with whiskey. But 
if it's your go-to, which it, it, it's almost kind of like being honest with you and saying, it's not really good enough on its own, it needs a bit of help. And there's some whiskies for that, you know, you, you see it with blends and stuff, and you're seeing it with some single malts as well. Um, it is just an admittance of lower quality. If you're fine with that, it, it doesn't matter, really. You know, if you're into your whiskey highballs, then you can, you can have a great life, because you're going to be spending a lot less money on whiskey in the first place, so it doesn't matter. Um, I'm a little bit jealous, if I'm honest. Um, but... But yeah, it's it's that kind of like honesty without being honest kind of a thing almost, isn't it? Does that make sense? I don't know. I'm I'm just putting off doing this again, aren't I? Hmm. The nose there is hot buttered waffles. It's quite sugary on the nose. And there is something a little bit fruity in there still, but it's, it's more like prunes. It's more like um Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, prunes. I'm just going to say prunes, actually. Yeah. Um, unusual nose. There's a few more notes coming out of it, at least, so that's something. Yeah, the water's helped. The water's helped take the burn off of the finish, but it has also really muddied all the flavours. Because obviously it's 40% already. And then actually, as I'm talking, there's like a hint of that really nasty acetone flavour coming through again. It's massively subdued, because obviously you've diluted it. But it's still there. It's still managing to fight its way through. It's nowhere near as bad, but it's still there. Um, I'm not going to lie, I was expecting worse. Um, particularly given some of the things that people have to say online, because that's what we're going to do now. I've been on Master of Malt. Um, well, I've been on Amazon and I've been on Google as well. And the variance in what people have to say about the whiskies is... Alarming. Uh, on Google and on Amazon, mostly positive things. So I thought I'd read just the negative stuff of Master of Malt because that's funny. Disappointing. Slight understatement. Very disappointed. A reflection of my memories of what I thought I was buying. Note to self, I must remember to check the packaging thoroughly. There is a harshness that almost requires ice, and then allowing it to melt a little. This is not what I expect from a single malt, and I will not be buying it again. Founders Reserve Boone's Farm. With the tariffs, I couldn't stomach the Macallan 12 sherry cask at 10 bucks more. Their double cask is still doable, and almost got it till I saw the FR for half price. Sorry I left Macallan for this. No character or depth. If you just want an alcohol buzz without the amazing scotch flavour that develops in your palate, then this is it. Like a Founders Reserve Boone's Farm. I'm not quite sure what that means, but I'm assuming it's bad. Seriously? If you're naming something Founders Reserve, expectations are justifiably going to be high. This is really not good. Just sweet notes, and then nothing but alcohol burn. Usually, Master Malt tasting notes are pretty spot on, but this time it just feels like they picked random words. Nice packaging, though. Normally, I'm okay with new, no age statement versions of established malts. Some can be surprisingly good. Dalwini Winter's Gold. Most are decent, if slightly less interesting slash complex, than the regular 12 slash 10 year old bottlings. This is a bit of a shocker, to be honest. The regular 12 year old is a staple in the cabinet, so I've never bought this before. But the 12 year old has been out of stock around here, and this was on offer, so I've given it a go and tasted it twice, to be sure. It is very sweet, almost cardoo like Not a huge problem, but there's some rough oak and quite nasty fiery burn on the finish. It's almost like a poor young bourbon than a malt. Guess the age? I'd be surprised if it's more than five or six. I am shocked at how rough this is. Really shocked. Matured in pilchard casks. The worst single malt I've tasted. Totally terrible, even with Pepsi and lemon. Oof. Nasty, poorly aged whiskey. Initial pleasant taste from added flavours which soon fade. Poor, albeit not as bad as Hay Club. The 12 year old is one of the best. Thank God it is available again. Founders Reserve was a mistake. I bought this for only £25 and at that price it is still disappointing. Initial nose is pleasant enough, fruit and orange is there. First taste you get a lot of sweetness then not much besides alcohol. I'm afraid that at the time I don't agree with the Master of Malt notes. 
There's not much going on here, and not much to report on the finish either. Even at £25, there is much better available. I will definitely not be buying again. Hate it! Crappy when compared to the 12 year. Very harsh, especially if you're a GL12 drinker like me. Age it longer. Not worth the $6 less to drink this paint thinner. I'll stick to the 12 year. Or switch to Glenfiddich. Horrible. Nasty alcohol. Reminds me of £14 Bells slash Grants. Complete waste of money at £22 that I paid. I usually spend around £18 to £35 per bottle, and I would say there are some great whiskies available even near the bottom end of that scale. This is trash. Give it a wide berth. Does not taste old at all. I guess no older than four, and that's being kind. Very harsh ethanol kick in the teeth. Very poor whiskey from a great distillery. Should honestly be discontinued. The price Stella is all you need to know. Stella is capitalised, like the beer? I'm, I'm a bit lost on that one. A stunning fail, Glenlivet. Given as a gift when the 12 year old was no longer available. What an appalling replacement for what was an excellent value single malt. Thank god the 12 year old is now back on the shelves. Difficult not to sound harsh, as what I'm almost spitting out. Really? Is this really the Glenlivet? As stated on label and crafty Founders Reserve packaging? Harsh. Lacks complexity. The faint nose is enough to make one think one has a severe head cold. This is sweet, salty, paint stripper. Very immature. Alcohol burn? No depth. No character. So poor, in fact, that it is tempting to see if my car will run off there. Oof. Harsh. I certainly will not be repeating this enormous error. It is an insult to the term single malt, and an insult to Glenlivet, which has never been the best, even with its vastly superior 12 year old. Glenlivet has sold out. I'll not buy another bottle. Goodbye. Lightweight and harsh. Needed a bottle for Xmas and saw this on special offer for £22, from a poor selection available at my local supermarket. I was attracted by the price and good reputation of the distillery, but this was a bad buy. Lightweight and harsh. Next Xmas, I'll plan my whiskey better. So that was some of the more scathing reviews for this whiskey. I will point out there are lots of good reviews, but where's the fun in that? Um, they mostly say the, good th the same thing, which is people are being unnecessarily harsh about this and I quite like it. To which I will make the quick point that taste is subjective, um, but I just thought that it was, it was too funny not to. To be honest, um, if if you are into this, then let me know down below. Um, or if you also like trawling through bad reviews of things, <coughs> let me know that as well. Uh, thumb this video if you enjoyed it. Uh, do you think I was being a bit too cruel? I hope so. It was thumb. Um, and do join me next time where I'll be drinking something else.